Now, my special guest today is the A-list Nigerian comedian Clint the Drunk, who conceives and performs his improv comedy to huge acclaim in Nigeria and across Africa and the diaspora. But of course, his entertainment life isn't just about stand-up comedy. He also has a background in singing, dancing and acting, as well as drawing and painting. And beyond all that, he's expanded his burgeoning career by starring in Nollywood feature films. But he's best known for his weird caricature of drunkenness, a comedic world in which drunken behavior dominates and sobriety has acquired a sort of pathological strangeness, as we discover from one of his uproarious performances in London. Happy to be here, a wildlife life in London. Wait, why is it a wildlife? Has anyone come to your show dead before? <laughs> like a white dead. Not like you. In the show, as in, uh, I, as I was saying, you people are here, enjoy yourself. Nigeria is a problem. So many things going on in Nigeria. Please, our footballers, please, please put your hands together for them. You people are the only hope we have now to smile. The only hope. They are the entertainers. You are the entertainers of Nigeria now. If you lose one match, if you venture, try. All of you go and shuffle your feet. Every shot must be on point. Let the fourth be their goalkeeper, not we. Let it be that their goalkeeper has a magnetor that attracts football. Not that you people look post in front of the 18-yard box, you fire shot and you go throw it. We'll kill you. I'm telling you, this, this is the only hope we have. What is going on in Nigeria? One Imo man came to Lagos after doing what they sent him from the office to do. He went back home to the office and they asked him, so what's the status? He said, no, all the statues are in Imo State. There's nothing statue here anymore. Well, that certainly is funny. And the Nigerian comedian, Afam Igwemba, a.k.a. Clint the Drunk, joins me now from our studios in Lagos. And uh, hopefully you're, you're not drunk. Can you hear me, Clint? <laughs> I mean, I can see your eyes. I can see your, <laughs> I can see a strand of hair across. Ah, oh, there you are. I can actually, I can hear you. I can hear you clearly. I just want to give you a hard time. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We don't mind a hard time from you because, I mean, it makes it a jolly good Friday. I mean, we're all looking forward to taking a bit of a break. So uh, brilliant to have you. And um, thank you very much indeed for your patience. Um, as we say, we save the best for last. Um, let me start by asking you, how did your passion for comedic drunkenness begin? I mean, why did you develop a passion for becoming a drunken comedian? First of all, before I start answering any of your questions, you, I, I, I don't understand the fact that when you are starting this, this program, you are speaking a lot of big, big English for the career that me, myself, on my own, started doing. He said, I'm a pathological, um, hey, how did you speak that English? I nearly remember it. He said, you, he has a part, uh, what was the question he asked me again? <laughs> okay, my question is this. First of all, it's brilliant to have you in character, but we also want to get to know the real you and how you metamorphosed into this character. So how did your passion for comedic drunkenness begin? Why did you develop a passion for becoming a drunken comedian rather than another type of comedian? That's like four questions in one. Wow. I'm going to start from the beginning, okay. Um, how did I was, um, develop the passion for comedy? I've always loved seeing people smile. I love seeing people happy. It has always been a thing in me. But the development started when hunger came. When you finish school and there's no work, trust me, you have passion for unpassionable things. I have passion for people that drink 
I watch them, and at the end of the day, everything becomes clear instead of blurry. And I decided, let me try this. Anyway, I used, I started with doing magic. I tried magic. That one did not pay me. And then I tried singing. And when I was doing singing, Two-Face now came into school, sang his own song. And I left him for that because I couldn't compete with that. Moving on, I now tried this one. And immediately this one hook. I hook onto it and I continue with it up till now. Well, that's a very that's, interesting point because I, I was gonna, I was gonna bring up that point about you. Uh, from what I read, you actually started off in music, but then you you mentioned magic, but you you diverted yes, to comedy because oh, Two Face Edibia apparently gained admission into your school, your IMT. You went to IMT yes, in Ugo and, and I didn't know it was you. Zim. The day of a shadow me, a row, it is not of a shadow. This arise TV now. Anything that is said against me is in, is in the court of law here. See, it is not of a shadow me. Two, I was, I they call me for a show. And people were already enjoying my voice. I was saying, we were like, oh, you have a beautiful voice. I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then they invite me for another show. I went for the show. When I got there, they told me one other boy wants to sing that I should just give him small chance. I say, go ahead, whoever it is. Sky is too big. I didn't know I was in the narrow part of the sky. So two face now enter. Him and Blackface, they were called Alien Pirates that time. The two of them start. They first sang national anthem in a way that no Nigerian can sing. Then they started singing another song, sang this, sang that. Before they could finish the second stanza of the first song that they sang second, I entered a car that I went through. I respected myself because what I heard, if I went on that stage, knowing the crowd we had that time, they would have beat the living daylight out of me. So I just respect myself and went through. Simple. <laughs> End of story. So it's not overshadowing. Overshadowing okay. is that there was light and the shadow casted over my shadow. And my shadow was not able to contain the shadow that their shadow casted on my shadow. So it overshadowed the shadow that my, the, their shadow, the, let, what was the next question? Well, I, I have to say that what is, what is really interesting about listening to you is that, I mean, you've got to be a very intelligent person to actually be able to put out this kind of comedy because you clearly are. I mean, seeing you play the, the comedic role of Clint the Drunk is, I mean, visually incredibly arresting, not so much in Arise Studios, but when you're on stage performing, very theatrical, a little bit surreal, um, but genuinely very funny. But obviously, you're not drunk when you get into character, are you? Oh, okay. Let us become, let's go, let's be a little bit uh, technical about it. What is the meaning of this question? As in, why are you driving that? You want to know whether I drink before I go on stage? I, I'm trying to understand As because, I mean, question, I understand I that drink, you don't do drink I at get... all. <laughs> That's what you would have just asked me. Do you get drunk before you go on stage? You start speaking English that the academical and unglomerical part of your act that before you do this, that, to, see, the time of this interview you will not finish and you won't be able to ask me much questions. Go straight to the point. So your question is, do I drink alcohol before I go on stage? No. I get high on cash cohol. <laughs> okay, so it is cash cohol, not alcohol. <laughs> yes, exactly. My ear has fallen out. I'll put it back. Hold on. I'm back again. Right, okay. But, I mean, it is... It is drunken comedy to everyone's taste, or are there people who are not particularly taken by it? No comedy in this world is to anybody's taste. 
No comedian is loved by everyone. If you're looking for what you're going to do that everybody will love, there's this new thunder that will fire you. The thunder comes with, you know, cousins and nephews. That thunder will fire you because you'll be there waiting for what everybody will love until the day you die. You can never satisfy everybody. So the ones I'm satisfying, I'm comfortable, I'm don't, I'm don't uh, and don't, I'm don't, I'm don't, I'm don't, I'm don't, I'm don't, I'm okay with them. Okay. Well, let me let me say this. I mean, is there a is there a deeper sort of purpose and message behind the choice of playing a drunken character, or is it just pointless fun? I mean, is there a satire there? Satire. I don't know what who the, the satire the tire the tire that I bought when my tire had a problem. Nobody sat on it, so I don't know about satire. But I know that the reason I'm doing this is for people. I've always said it from beginning all the way to now. Anytime I'm closing my acts, I always make people understand. Drink responsibly. Other comedians are doing their jokes because what they say is funny. Me, I am showing you what you can be like when you are drunk you become the joke. You are the one that they laugh at, not the thing you say, not anything. My ear is about to fall again. <laughs> so yeah. the thing behind this front is that I am the joke, and this you become a joke when you drink too much, and you're like this, and you present yourself. You can imagine me now in front of everybody at Rise TV. So I rise as a drunk. What will my children say about me in the future? Just think about it. And you now that is interviewing a drunk to, to, I don't know, I've destroyed your life now. Well, you, you haven't quite destroyed my life, but I was rather hoping that you'd come out of character and um, talk to me as, as a sort of regular person. Although I have to say that we're entirely enjoying, um, I mean, the, the character is absolutely fascinating. And I think the great thing about it is that it comes across as clearly overblown, but this overblownness, if you like, matches the overblown narrative of someone who is drunk, and that makes it very believable. No. Overblown. Let me tell you something about overblown. When, when your children, you are in the birthday party and you are blowing, blown, blown for your children. If it's not overblown, they will never like it. That's one. Two, think about characters like Mr. Bean, Charlie Chaplin, and all those people. All the things they do, it has to be overblown so that you can get the point now. But if you do not have a good point. Blown, and I mean, and on that note not... of being overblown, can I ask you to please stay with us? <laughs> and don't drink while we take a break, but stay with us. We're going to come straight back to you. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our dip into the surreal drunken antics of Clint the Drunk, one of Nigeria's comedy greats. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anugulu. Now let's continue with the highlights of Nigerian comedy and one A-list comedian who's made it big by focusing on the lowlights. Clint the Drunk says it's safer there because others have beaten a path before him, others like Two-Face Edemia. Uh, occasionally, of course, Clint the Drunk takes off into the bushes on either side, not worrying too much if the audience is going to follow, but indeed they have sticking with him as he's plotted his own comedy course over the years. His collection of surreal, drunken antics have caught the popular imagination. The weirder it gets, the more intriguing it is to the audience. I don't know, with all this lie, these people are spreading. That means this $50, $50 might, be, might not be fake.
No, forget. I'm an evil man. This is not just fake. Even the picture in front is a picture of. How can Nelson Mandela be on the I don't understand. Anyway, there is not too much time. I have to tell you people the reason I came. Okay, first of all, I have to find out the reason why I came. <laughs> In that there was actually no reason, <laughs> or the code has blocked the reason somewhere. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm so happy to be here. It's been a long time. Wait, I'm running low of fuel. Of course, a brilliant stuff there. The celebrated Nigerian comedian Clint the Drunk is still with me from our studios in Lagos. So thank you very much indeed for staying with with us. I don't know if I should call you Mr. Drunk, but, but clearly you have great fun playing the character. But can I appeal to you, uh, Clint the Drunk, to just please come out of character for a minute because we want to be able to get the, the, our audience, global audience, to get a sense of who you are. I mean, let, let's, do you think that you, you might be stretching it a bit beyond its natural ability to endure when it's this kind of feature length. Okay, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a, an uncle that drank very much before? Well, I, I know a lot of people, including uncles, who, who do drink a bit, yes. How long does it last? Well, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure I'd put them on television to, to do an interview with millions of people across the globe watching. I am their representative. Right. So tell, tell us a President bit. President of the Drunkard Association. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. Um, I, I'm sure they're all glad. The point, of course, is that they're not drunk all the time. They do recover from their drunkenness, don't they? I mean... They, they wake up at some point. Um, but returning to your... You were saying something. Oh, okay, well, anyway, oh, returning to your stand-up comedy, I mean, here you are, you have a live audience right there before you. How difficult is it getting them to laugh? Firstly, <laughs> I have a live audience. Would you, wait, would you have put me here if I had a dead audience? Of course we have a live audience. They are live and they are audience. But, but there's a difference between a live audience and an alive audience. And we're talking about a live yes, audience. Yes, this is... And there's a difference from rise and arise. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... Oh. Tell us Arise, a bit. A live audience. Well, let, let's talk a bit about your because we've got about five minutes uh, to five to seven minutes or so left of this interview. Um, let's try and make the most out of it. Tell us a bit about your metamorphosis over the years, because I mean, you are multi-talented beyond being a, a sort of, you know, beyond the melodramatic effect of Clint the drunk and his often sort of absurd actions. You're also a singer, a dancer, an actor, a fine artist, a painter. You know, where does all this fit in and how much time do you devote to each one? Okay, let me help you out right now. I know you'll, you'll prefer me to talk like this, right? Brilliant. Welcome back. <laughs> uh -huh, I know. <laughs> I actually came to this interview to stress you out, to stress you to the highest limit, but it's fine since we have like seven minutes, no, five minutes or thereabout. But okay, let, let's talk a little bit. Um, where, do, uh, where does everything fit in? The uh, comedy, the music, the arts, the singing, the dancing, and everything. Well, in the year 2020, I was planning a show here in Lagos where I was meant to do a show where everything about me, every single talent I had and every single thing I wanted to showcase to people was going to show there. But it didn't happen because, it didn't happen because, um, you know, 
the COVID and everything, and a whole lot of things. Uh, it caused a whole lot of chain reaction that was kind of negative. So a whole lot of things didn't ho this didn't happen. But um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to do the show. I am planning to do it. A whole lot of people that wanted to be part of it, they needed this year to kind of get themselves back, recoup, get them the whole thing. Because to do such a program, you need a lot of money, you know. So the idea yeah. is to showcase all the talent. That's why it was meant to be termed extraordinary. We're, we're looking forward to seeing that show and hope it, it sort of gets off, off the ground. Um, I saw it listed somewhere it will, um, amongst the things that you do that you're also a gadget enthusiast. I mean, what does that mean? Is that a sort of hobby or something more purposeful than that? Okay, well, I have always been a gadget person. Um, I can't use one thing that does only one thing. Uh, like... Whenever I'm talking, whenever I want to buy anything that is a gadget, it must be something that is multi-purpose. Like it has a lot of purpose, like a lot of things it can do. So I've always been a fan of uh, uh, what you call it. When it comes to gadgets nowadays, almost everything is packed into mobile phones, and I've always been a fan of uh, the Samsung brand. I know I'm not really meant to be mentioning it, but. Um, I've been a fan of their brand, and it's uh, funny enough, because of how well I use the gadgets, not just that, um, so many other gadgets, I, the, the fan I have does more than a fan. It could, it's a fan, it could record, it could, you know, illuminate lights and everything, and it's rechargeable, it's everything. So, like... You have a fan, but it's not just a fan. Anyone comes in, that's a fan. Anyone comes in, you have an air condition that doubles as, uh, um, what do you call it? A painting. It's like a painting, but it's an AC and a few other things. Though I had to modify that myself. And a few other things, you know. Now, because uh, I've always been a, a gadget person, like recently I became, I officially became a, a brand influencer for Samsung, you know, so... It's all falling in place. Everything is all falling in place. So, well, well, I'm glad I'm, to hear I'm that those. because, I mean, you, you certainly have, um, you, you've, you've become very popular and uh, very successful in Nigeria and beyond. I mean, you've been in, in other parts of Africa, you've been in Europe and so on. Um, but of all the hats that you wear, you're a dancer, you're a comedian, you're an actor, you're a painter. I mean, which one do you feel most comfortable doing? I feel more comfortable being an entertainer. I like that. And on that note, I mean, that's, that, that's a very good answer. That means you're a very eclectic person and you can do it all. On that note, I want to thank you, Clint the Drunk, very much indeed for coming on the program today. And uh, Clint was talking to me there from our studios in Lagos. That's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and around the world, including Lagos, of course. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.